Hey everybody and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm so excited. I did a little tutorial. I'm not joking. I don't know what time it is right now. I started a while ago. It is now dark. Um, but I'm really, really excited about this. As I told you in my fall favorites video, Nightmare Before Christmas is like my favorite, one of my favorite movies of all time. And so I figured like if I'm actually going to go full out with like a makeup look, that would be like the perfect thing for me. I was really teetery-tottering between like Sally and Jack. I mean like time and like materials permitted. I very well might do a Sally tutorial this year as well. It just really depends on like time like I said. But I'm really excited with the way this came out with. Um, I've never done this before. I want to see if I can zoom in a little bit more. Sorry. This is wobbly. I've never done a full face or body painting or anything like that. And um... I'm actually really excited. It's not perfect. It's not like anybody you go and you watch like glam and gore. Oh my gosh, can you imagine? I'd be so excited if my stuff was even like half that good. Um, but it basically just was like skimming through like a billion and one pictures of Jack to just find something I really felt like spoke to me. And I ended up finding like the most... Let me grab my phone. <sighs> I ended up finding like the most... It's almost like the most basic picture ever. Um, but I just, it was so, like, perfect for what I, I don't know. I feel like that's the great thing about inspiration. And it is just, sorry, this picture right here. I'm trying not to get the glare. But do you just see? It's, like, the most basic picture of his face. And, I mean, obviously I didn't get his eyes perfectly. That was the one thing that killed me. It's, like, I wanted the shape of the eye holes with that expression. I mean, like, I did the best that I could, but... I don't know, I'm actually really excited. In the end of the video, you won't see, I didn't put lips on, so you can see kind of like both. If you want to make it a little bit more girly, I did go ahead, I mean, what's frustrating is you can't tell. And I put a, I put a decent amount on, but I put some 3D black glitter from MAC on my little cheek shadow here. It can be like a mini contour shadow. But you can't even tell, and I'm so sad because in real life you can kind of tell a little bit, but I mean, I guess... I don't know, maybe if you're in a different setting, like at a party or something, maybe you'll be able to see. And I added sepia to my lips, and since there's a little bit of black in there, just from the ending anyway, it kind of just, I mixed them together as sepia was still wet, and kind of got this, like, ombre. So when my mouth is closed, it still looks very, like, masculine, but you can have that element of, like, female-ness in there if you don't want to go super scary looking. Body stuff is totally optional as well. Um, the body paint that I did use is water-based. So, I mean, obviously, if you're going to go to a party and you're dancing or anything like that, this will run. So, I recommend a cream base and setting that with powder. I did buy some creams, too, so I'll probably play with those because I do want to do this look again when I go to a party soon. So, yeah, that's enough blabbing i really hope that this video doesn't come out to be like 45 years long but anyway i really hope that you enjoy this look and i am so excited for you to watch me create it so thank you all so much for watching and i'll be seeing you very soon bye Alrighty, so to start off with, I'm just going to be going in with the Snazaroo face paint. This is like pretty much my first time using any kind of face paint other than like what you played with as a kid. Um, so it took me a while to like be able to completely understand it and I had to use like two or three different layers just to get the amount of opacity that I was hoping for because it took a lot longer than I was anticipating. And then just make sure that you go down the neck too just to make sure that like I ended up going back in with some black later on anyway but I mean it's just like good to start there and I apologize in advance the light will change like 12 times throughout this video just because the sun was going down and it did go down and then I use the ring light and so yeah there's a bunch of stuff going down but then I went in with the black paint from Snazaroo as well and I used that to draw the outline of the eye and I keep looking down in this specific clip because I'm using that reference photo that I showed you in the beginning of Jack's face because I really I felt like the eyes were the most important part to get down that like ideal shape because it was so full of expression in that particular picture 
normally I would go in with like something like NYX Wonder Pencil to kind of like outline that perfect shape but unfortunately with these with this paint specifically since it was water based I didn't have that much leeway room with it or at least not that I found so far maybe there's a technique that I'm missing but it was just kind of like I had to go straight in with the black and it was definitely a little bit to clean up the edges around it but once you get that initial shape down, just go ahead and fill it in as you normally would. The one mistake I did make, but I mean, I didn't go anywhere with the makeup, so it doesn't really matter, is I didn't set the black on my eye. And since I do have slightly oily eyes, um, that's why in the intro you can kind of see it's a little bit less opaque there when I close my eyes. But I'm not quite sure if you could even set these with powder, to be honest with you, because it like dries to like a very matte finish from what I've noticed. And that's one thing you can definitely play around with is the shape of the eye because that gives him his specific expression. So if you want a more friendly Jack, just draw more perfect circles. Uh, but that specific picture just kind of had this like ghoulish expression, which is great because I think of Jack overall. I don't think of him as being scary just because I'm not a big scary fan in general. But I just loved that like expression just by the eyes and I think that's so great when you're looking at a picture you can just tell so much just from one detail on one feature of your face. I kind of feel like I should do story time um, but I'll go in between explaining and stories. So with that my camera stopped like three times while I started doing that mouse so I couldn't get that first line but I mean it's pretty obvious. I started as if you were going to do your contour so like right where your ear like the top of your ears and just make as straight of a line going towards the corners of both sides of your mouth as possible and with this I was just using a very very small angled brush the one I'm using specifically was from Morphe it was like a dollar or two but it was really good for getting that really precise line in there the lips you just want to make a small line on the inside of the top and the bottom lip and then you're just going to go in and start making those stitches and what's great about this is it the less straight they are, in my opinion, the better and more natural that they look. So as I went out and did more of the teeth, I tried to keep them very evenly spaced. But as for the actual, um, like, I guess, angle of each tooth, I did it kind of a little bit slanted. So when I would go to the top, instead of just doing a straight up and down, I'd kind of just do like a slight angle. And then with the bottom, doing a slight different angle to where there's more dimension in it. Because like in the old days, if you've ever like seen pictures of stitches, they were never completely perfect in my opinion they look kind of like spooky and creepy so like I said this gives you a little bit more leeway for creativity and less need for perfection with if you're anything like me it's better because precise isn't always everybody's friend and then just going in after you finish that side and doing the exact same thing to the other side and I just feel the need to mention this because you can see it behind me now as I'm moving my head a little bit and as the sun was going down, I had a candle on the whole time just because I feel like it was it was a nice night for a candle, but it just looks funny back there like flickering. It really wasn't supposed to be part of like a prop or anything, otherwise I probably would have put it somewhere a little bit more visible, not directly behind my head. Um, and then now I'm just going to go ahead and do your nose holes. And with this, you can be, like you don't have to be perfect with this either. I was just looking at the shape of the two little like slits that were for his nose. And with this, you do need to go on top of the nose and then slightly, ever so slightly below it and a little bit like, I don't want to say in your nose, but it's kind of in like the base of your nose. You want to go a little bit in just to get that dimension. And then I'm just going to be going in with a black eyeshadow and shadowing all the way around the hairline to basically give you a more circular shape to your face. I do have a more circular slash oval face shape in general but if you don't that's what's great about this is because the shading is going to give you the ability to create that more perfect circle that you're looking for for his face. And one thing that I did notice, because obviously like I did like several layers of the black to kind of give it the desired dark or depth, I guess, that I was looking for, is the more I blended it out, obviously because I wanted it to look blended out, um, that the white was kind of flaking a little bit right in those areas specifically where I blended it a little bit too hard, I guess. Um, so just keep that in mind if you use these Nazaru paints not to blend too harshly because it'll take some of that base off that you put in. And I did put this on my ears. 
but luckily I have not had any instances of black hidden gems being found in my ear a week later so that was good but I probably should have taken the earrings out before doing that definitely would have been a good idea and then for my face shape definitely the chin area was something I needed to round off a little bit more and it just helps to give you a little bit more of like a, that natural shadow below when you're looking straight on to your face and then just connecting everything and going ahead and blacking out that second year so you're not lopsided and then with that one I just kept re-layering and layering and layering but I didn't want to put any cream or anything in my ear because heaven only knows I probably would have been finding black hidden gems today and then once you get that filled in, I mean, I in this clip is bothering me because it's not completely as dark as I wanted it around that hairline. But once you are done, definitely you can blend that in a little bit more into your hairline, which I did do later on, but I'm not have a clip of it. I'm going to go ahead with a gray shadow and kind of just add some shadow and depth to those stitches to make it appear as if they're a little bit more inset on to your face. With that, there's no specific technique that I used other than I started kind of like at the base of each stitch and blended it outwards like I said once again try not to blend too too hard so you're not taking any of that white base off of your face at this point I definitely had to turn the light on and unfortunately I don't have good lighting just naturally in my room so it's very yellow so I apologize for the change in the yellow light and I'm going to go ahead with that same gray shadow and just shade the nose a little bit as well to give it that same kind of like sunken in appearance. And then the same thing right underneath like the eye socket area just to once again give it more of that sunken in look and with this you can make it as dramatic as you want you can actually like blend it down into like a slightly different shape I've seen different pictures with that where it looks really cool so you can definitely play around with the shape underneath the eye here I just wanted to go for a little bit more of a traditional kind of semi-circular shape and then blend it out very softly with that same gray shade that I had used for the teeth as well as the nose area and then with this part I'm just gonna be going in with the gray shad shadow and mapping out some angry eyebrows actually more so they kind of just go with the shape of the face and this is good instead of just going straight in with the black to just give you like the same thing as if I were to use like the NYX Wonder Pencil. Sorry, my voice is, oh my gosh, that's awful. <laughs> Well, now that I'm done dyeing and my throat is clear, um, like I said, it could be used as the same thing as like a NYX Wonder Pencil, give that outline shape and make them as dramatic or as traditional as you'd like. Like I said, I've seen the same type of thing as like the contour underneath the eye to just give your, your version of the creation more personality, which I think is great. I just wanted mine to be really like bold and add more emphasis on that eye area because I feel like that really, really for me is like selling the look is that specific eye area. And then once you feel comfortable with the shape that you have mapped out, just go back in with that Snazaroo black eye paint and that same angled eyeliner blush, eyeliner brush that I was using to fill in that eye shape and give it the necessary oomph. And what's great about using is the angled brush is since these are, you don't have that much space up there. I mean, obviously everybody's face shape is a little bit different, but you don't have that much space. So it gives you a very fine, precise line and you can like flip it to different angles to give you different angles with the color that you're using as well. And I would recommend bringing them more around like I am doing here at the very end just so you don't close off that eye area. I brought it all, or brought it all the way around to that opposite end of the eye right there and then after that I'm just gonna go ahead and do Jack's neck or what would be his very thin neck with a simple line of the white face paint I kind of just used where your neck naturally sticks out right there in the front as my guideline for that so that should be like an easy tip for pretty much everybody and just doing that single white line and then I'll be going in to both sides of that with black as if to black it out if you're using like a darker background which in the end I ended up having so that way it kind of just gives the illusion that that white will just stand out instead of the black and then kind of just like a little side note to clean up those lines I found that the easiest way was to instead of trying to clean it up with white if you go ahead with that angled brush and add black so do the white as close as you can but then to clean it up use black 
that was very trial and error for me to figure that one out. So any mistakes and cleaning up is the easiest with the darker of the shades that you will be using. And then this is the finished look. So I hope you all enjoyed this recreation of Jack Skellington and I'll be seeing you very soon.